For the past few years, the 1080 has had a bit of an identity crisis. It used to be the Max Cushion sibling to the 880. But then, New Balance started making the fresh foam more. So where does that leave the 1080? It's time to lace up the New Balance Fresh Foam X 1080 version 13 and take it for a run. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuizi and I'm a non-elite runner who reviews shoes here on YouTube. And today I want to tell you guys about the New Balance 1080 version 13. But before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that New Balance sent to me for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe and they're not going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the 1080 version 13. First, Let's go over some specs on the shoe. We've got a 38 millimeter stack height shoe with a six millimeter drop, giving us 32 millimeters of foam in the forefoot. And that foam is New Balance's Fresh Foam X. This is a updated version of this foam that generally over the years has had a lot of different qualities depending on which shoe they're putting it in. This year in this version, in the 1080 version 13, it is a lighter feeling foam that has a good amount of cushion, but a great amount of springiness and bounce. So it's been really lively to be able to run it. On the outsole, they've changed the amount of coverage that we're getting here on the outsole. So that way there are little pods of rubber interspersed in between exposed areas of foam. They've gotten rid of the super stretchy mesh that I really loved from last year, but I'm happy to report that this new stuff is really comfortable and feels very soft on foot. Even though they don't use a ton of padding throughout this shoe, it just overall gives a great feeling of comfort. The only one area of like padding that I think is a little bit excessive is here on the back of the heel at the Achilles. I'm not really sure we need all this much here and it doesn't look like it so much on this version, but New Balance also sent me one of the winter colorways that I probably shouldn't show you yet but that color this little pillow back here reminds me of a little gnocchi and once I saw it I can't unsee it so it seems like a really smartly cushioned shoe except for the little gnocchi pillow at the back. Altogether, this shoe comes in at a relatively light weight this year, 9.2 ounces or 260 grams, although they're reporting that weight as a 9.5 men's, which is different than the usual US men's nine that is typically used by the industry for reporting weights. And the shoe that I have is a men's size nine, so it's a little bit lighter than that. Now with those specs out of the way, let's talk about what it was like to actually run in the shoe. And I think to answer the question that I set out at the beginning of the video, I really feel like the 1080 is starting to make sense to me. And the people that I think are going to like the 1080 version 13 are someone that wants something that's a little bit more cushioned than say a regular daily trainer, but still want that kind of daily trainer type of feel, the nimbleness, the agility, uh, and that lightweight bounce. And I feel like the 1080 version 13 delivers on all of those things really well. I've enjoyed it for easy runs, recovery runs, and even things where I'm picking up the pace a little bit. I feel like there's a lot of pace versatility in this shoe. You can take it for a wide variety of runs and you're going to be all day comfortable in this shoe. I do feel like this also could probably be a good travel shoe. I do feel like because they've moved away from that super stretchy mesh material that they used last year, overall the fit of the shoe feels to be like a little bit more snug, but not in a, like a tight kind of way, just in a little bit more of a secure hug kind of a way. And again, because of the way that this material is so nice and comfortable, overall, it's just a nice cozy feeling that you're getting in the shoe. I still went true to size, both in this version and in last year's version. And in both of those cases, the size nine that's usual for me was the right size for me to wear. Now let's get into some of the pairing options if you're interested in picking up this New Balance 1080 version 13. I think if you're having this as your cushioned daily trainer or just your daily trainer, I think the two other shoes that you should probably look to have to round out a rotation would be a workout shoe and a race day shoe. And for workouts, I think a really fun option would be the Topo Cyclone version two. It's a pretty underrated shoe, but it's a lot of fun to run in. It's all pure P-Bax midsole foam in here, no plate. So it gives you a very neutral, very bouncy experience that's exciting to take for those threshold mile repeats or those fart like runs when you need to pick up the pace. And then when it comes to race day or those long runs with marathon effort work in there, those 
biggest of workouts. I think that the Endorphin Pro 3 from Saucony is going to be a really fun choice to be able to pair with the 1080 version 13. I feel like both of these shoes at the respective speeds at which you'd be using these two shoes have a very pleasant squish in and then bounce back that I think is going to translate well from your easy day paces all the way up through your race day paces. Now let's talk about the pricing and the buying guide recommendations for this shoe. The New Balance 1080 version 13 comes out at $165 when it finally releases on October 13th. And I feel like the $165 price point is a bit annoying because it seems like the industry standard for this type and caliber of shoe is about 160, but I feel like New Balance is trying to slowly creep up that price. Probably next year we'll see a $170 shoe in this category, but 165, let's see where it stacks up against the competition. At 160, you've got a natural competitor, a perennial competitor to the 1080, and that's the Saucony Triumph. 21. I have the 21 RFG, which is an eco-friendly version. Both of these shoes are trying to do the same thing. They're a more heavily cushioned daily trainer or a lightweight max cushion shoe. Depends on which way you want to get to that end result. And I feel like they both are very excellent shoes in that subcategory. That Triumph 21 comes in at $160. Personally, I find the 1080 version 13 to be just a little bit softer, a little bit springier. And another shoe that I think you should be looking at if you're really liking the 1080 is from Puma, and that's the DV8 Nitro 2. This is one of my favorite shoes of this year. Uh, and this one is going to be a little bit more firm when it comes to those easy paces and recovery paces. But this shoe, because it has a carbon composite plate and it's using Nitro Elite foam, which is Puma's racing foam in here, I feel like it much better at picking up the pace. And in fact, I love this as a workout shoe. Both of these shoes come in at 160 bucks. So that is a very compelling price. Although from time to time, the Puma does go on sale because this shoe's been out for about nine months at this point. And so right now I'm seeing the women's for sale at $126, which is a great price for that shoe. Although the men's seems to be only available at full price from Puma itself. So that's where the competition is, right around that 160 point. At the end of the day, I'm not super upset about $5, but I'm also annoyed about it because I think that's kind of what New Balance is banking on literally. But those are my thoughts on the New Balance 1080 version 13 and the competition. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday over on the Kofuzi Run Club channel. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?